Thank you, Ashish. So now that Ashish has uh, completed his uh, fourth and fifth week, in the sixth week, what we started to do is that, okay, so we are talking so much about data, so much about understanding what uh, data means and how to uh, check the validity of the data with these very sophisticated and different models. So in week six, I started by trying to teach you guys with a very simple example of calibration of a burette. We once again opened an entire experimental protocol where we were checking where all systematic errors could come from. After having done that, we had a nice tabular column where one ends up calculating different variables and finally understanding the what error comes up in the final measurement. So we ended up doing that as, uh, uh, as an example to understand how very basic linear curves could be fit for something like y equal to mx plus uh, c type curve. And following this week, we were able to even take it forward where we, we wanted to understand linear fits by determining the heat of solution of benzoic acid. That means if you are adding a certain amount of benzoic acid, how much of that gets dissolved at a certain temperature. Then we employed the Van Toff equation where we had uh, the solubility, the log of solubility as a function of 1 over temperature. Then we get a linear uh, curve which we fit to get the slope where the slope was able to get, give us the heat of solution. So in these two experiments, we once again spent a lot of time understanding where all systematic errors could come up and how to avoid these carefully. After having done these two examples, the next step that we embarked on was to learn how to simulate curves using spreadsheet program. This was important because many times, um, students end up having a phobia against equations and the main reason why we would like to simulate curves is that when you have a certain function f of x, we would like to see what is the dependence of this as a function of x and more importantly when you have a function that is of multiple variables, you would like to understand where all f is maximum and minimum by plotting this as a function of x, y and z. So this was basically done uh, in this week where we once again took very simple examples of y equal to mx plus c. And following this, we took up examples of kinetics, where you had zero order kinetics, first order kinetics, and second order kinetics. We simulated each one of this, and after having simulated them, we fit them to the curves of where we did uh, concentration of A as a function of time. Then you had first order rate kinetics, where you had ln of A as a function of time, or even A as a function of time, which will be an exponential function that you end up getting. On the other hand, second order was 1 over A as a function of time in order to understand what kind of dependencies ended up coming. So using spreadsheet software, which is freely available nowadays uh, using cloud platforms, we were able to understand how to simulate curves. And this forms an important aspect of understanding science because not always one is able to understand the functions that he or she is dealing with. So therefore, if you end up plotting, you would have an idea of how it ends up behaving. And in order to go a little faster, we started to simulate more curves where we used this software called MATLAB. Using the MATLAB, we were able to understand once again how to simulate linear curves first, which goes y equal to mx plus c. After having done that, we embarked on functions that are even more complicated than that. During this time, I introduced you to the michaelis menten equation where you have velocity of the reaction that goes as k cat times e naught divided by km e naught times s km plus s. So basically this is one of the equations that we are able to understand by plotting and simulating where you have a plot of velocity of the reaction as a function of as a function of substrate concentration. And then of course, you end up fitting it in order to get the two parameters that are of paramount interest. And here, we spent a lot of time to understand our analytical thinking on how quantitation could vary for the same exact plot, meaning that there are different ways of doing it. If one ends up taking the final points, uh, let us say we are able to plot V divided by E naught as a function of S. So what will end up happening, the E naught will come here. 
So using this, we were able to understand if you are estimating V by E naught at large concentrations of substrate, you realize that you will be able to estimate what is K cat. Once you are able to estimate K cat, if you have the initial slope, which will give you something like K cat by Km, one will be able to estimate what is Km. And this is important because in this way you will be able to determine the two factors that help you characterize an enzyme. On the other hand, other way of doing it is by taking the lawn plot, so meaning that, uh, no, or the reciprocal of this, not the lawn plot. You do one hour of this equation, so you are going to get something like When you take the reciprocal of this equation and then let us say you plot 1 over V as a function of 1 over S, then you get a linear line where the intercept gives you what is 1 over K cat from where K cat can be estimated and using the slope one will be able to estimate Km. So you have already been exposed to two different ways of getting the same number. However, the exact way of doing this would actually be plotting V over E naught as a function of S where you, you get this curve and are able to fit it using MATLAB. This was one of the important things to understand where we realized this kind of a fitting protocol give, gave you the minimum error. Although you just simulated all curves with no standard deviation or error, you realize that when you followed these two protocols, you ended up estimating very different values. So this was an important piece of understanding that one ends up getting where when you are able to simulate the curve and refit it back, you help yourself in understanding how the function behaves, where are all the functions very weak and where are they robust enough for you to fit and get the data back. So this was a very important piece of understanding how quantitation goes in any part of chemistry and therefore simulation ends up being an important aspect in it. Finally, we were able to understand how repeats help in getting what is an average and a standard deviation. Once you get this, you are able to plot each curve with a certain amount of error that goes in and therefore the Kcat and Km that one ends up measuring also comes up with such an error. And we realize that performing only one or two uh, experiments to get average and standard deviation with one, you cannot get an average and standard deviation, but two, you would be able to get it. But that is not a good way and if you are able to perform an experiment at least as a triplicate or by about five times it helps. Uh, but not always this is feasible depending upon the... Uh, conditions of the experiment, it becomes very difficult. It is just not restricted to michaelis menten equation, Al almost any aspect of practical aspect or even computational aspect, one should be able to repeat the experiment several times to understand what is that we are measuring and how broad is the distribution that we are trying to look at. So these two things uh, made us understand how simulating a curve and fitting it back in many, many different ways would uh, give different values. So one has to be very careful in the way one fits and remember the aspect that we were able to understand also using the simulations that once you take a reciprocal, the error that ends up coming in V is not, is actually being, um, uh, is mitigated, meaning that it is being reduced significantly. If you have a large error in V measurement, 1 over V will be a very precise measurement which ends up giving very good fits but the error on Km and Kcat are significant. With this knowledge in hand, uh, the next few weeks uh, Ashish gave you lecture on trying to understand how different separation techniques could be used and how mathematical frameworks would help you understand how these chemicals interact with one another for purification. And with this, uh, my lecture series came to an end and I hope you learnt quite a bit on understanding how to simulate, what, how to quantitate and what do numbers and data mean. I wish you all the very best and please follow up uh, the next few uh, uh, minutes so that Ashish's review for the 8th to 11th week uh, gets completed. Thank you.